Hello everybody, welcome to the semi-final of the Champs Ladder Season 36, I believe. Um, it is my uh, <laughs> my stupid Death Roller Dwarf team versus K-Fog's uh, Wood Elf team. Um, I dropped a reroll to deny the wizard. Um, so I only got two rerolls plus leader. Um, got loads of Mighty Blow and loads of Stand Firm and loads of Guard. Um, up against K-Fog who has loads of Blodge and Rog and he has an unbelievable one, natural one turning catcher. He has a movement one tree but it's got block and jump up so it's pretty good still. And he's got a pretty nice dancer. Um, so there you go. So that's that's the teams. You'll be getting a babe. And uh, on commentary, we have Gorilla Mezzo or Skuro Mezzo, whichever you prefer, and Purple Chest. I'm going to take off my headphones and. Uh, oh, he's getting two babes. I'm going to take my headphones off and concentrate on the match. And uh, thank you very much, Skuro and PC. Cheers. Absolutely. Good morning, afternoon, whatever you want it to be, wherever you are in the world. My name is Gorilla Metso, Purple Chest. How you doing today? We have one hell, probably the most anticipated CCL semifinal that I've ever had this year. That doesn't mean much. It's BC is so struck with excitement that uh, he uh, has no words for us for this one. All right, well, it looks like we are in game now, so hopefully I can, uh... there we go. Game loading up for me. Yeah. Folks, the winner of this game will go to the CCL finals to win absolutely nothing. This is a wild and exciting time to be playing competitive Blood Bowl. Now I've heard PC must have woken up from his nap. How you doing? Don't you even get some cyans or whatever they are? <laughs> I don't know. That, that, I, I said nothing and I stand by nothing, PC. I'm with you. Uh, I'm good. I'm loading in myself. Uh, yeah. Interesting the uh, interesting question we had just before they left the booth, obviously, to go do their, uh, their gaming. The, so is your team ready, Core? Well, might be. Interesting to see what they've cut and what they've kept when we load in uh, and what inducement that's going to mean we have. And of course, by the time we load in, this could all be over. Yeah, so Jimmy said he dropped a reroll down to two, but he must have leader. Is he? Yeah, yeah he he's does. got a leader on the pitch, so he's got three. That did deny a wizard to PC. PC looks like two babes yeah, yeah. for his inducement. PC's me. God, oh boy, we're starting this one early, aren't we? Are you high <laughs> this early? Oh, no, I just haven't had any coffee yet. <laughs> I'm going to do that all game. There's no way I'm not going to do that all game. What is going to be fascinating is, is who kicks, who receives, and how they choose to deal with that. Um, well, it looks like, looks like Jim on defense to start. Uh, also, I would recommend, since we're on Jim's stream... You should keep it oriented for him all the time, even though the natural inclination is to swap on offense. For people. Absolutely. Um, I think that has to mean that uh, that Jimmy won the toss. I think so. Yeah. I think if Cole won the toss, he would definitely have kicked to the Dwarfs. Yeah. And with Jimmy yeah. on D and the roller on the pitch, there's a question in my head. I don't think he's going to do it, but some people might be tempted to just. Put the ball in the natural one turner's hands and get that death roller straight off the pitch. Of course, that means 15 turns of hitting back for the dwarves. Yeah. Now, here's a wager for, for UPC. Here's a wager for Chad as well. What will be the very first turn that Jim gets a block on that movement 10 catcher, which is 90% of PC's <laughs> team? Yeah, again, that's Core's team. I'm commentating, not playing. Um, <laughs> I, if I think that that is going to be the, the most frightened elf in elf land, I don't think it's going to see any kind of dwarves uh, if it can possibly avoid it. Wow. Kickoff result is the weather has changed, so the snow has gone. That's great news for the dwarves. Much more reliant on a few go for its working when they need it than the elves are. Well, yeah, but it does it does take away one of the natural defenses he had against that player that that one turn. <laughs> Absolutely. So it's it's good and bad. Hey, more Plovetch. Yeah, I'm working on it, Doug. I'm working on it. Oh, are we getting a bit of a bit of the uh, the K folk da uh, Daka here. Ah! 
Ah, parfait Il a le ballon bien en main. C'est toujours un peu navrant quand il rate quelque chose d'aussi simple. L'important n'est pas la taille, Bob. Euh, bien sûr que si I mean, you can't really fault the DACA in this. You know, 90% of Jim's chances to win this game are just removing as many elves as he can to whittle down, expressed in this you know, to, to be able to get a hit on, uh, on that move Admin 10 team. catchers. <laughs> you might as well limit the amount of hits he's going to get all game. You're going to get a score, you know, <laughs> this half. He's definitely going to score, and then uh, off goes the death roller. If I miss anything whilst I got my lunch from burning. Uh, you missed the uh, you missed the perfect DACA setup and into I don't even think he blitzed, uh, and then into uh, tree getting itself knocked down by the roller. Now for anyone in chat that haven't heard of it yet, the DACA of course is named after Matt Coward um, on fumble and his habit of uh, with every team just running away, trying very hard not to play blood bowl. Well, looks looks like this. We're gonna have opposing Dakas here. We're gonna get the elf columns on both sides, <laughs> offense and defense. Uh, see who runs into who here. Um, technically, what you're trying to do with the Dakar, of course, is reduce attrition, and at the same time, uh, save up all of your rerolls for the key turn or two where you try and break through the line. And of course, without an elf bench, reducing attrition and trying to keep those rerolls dry for the turns you really need them does make some sense. What it does do, of course, is stop you trying to out position the other team, get around the back of them, or reversing the field, as I like to call it, and then stalling up on their touchdown line. It does make those turns where you try and break the line incredibly important. Absolutely. Now, Jim giving up some hits here, but I kind of like what he did because that just tying up every single player you know that he can possibly tie up can lead to uh, the collapse of the daca real fast and here's a yeah, stand from denial hit. is a key thing and here oh he wrestled he had wrestle okay wrestles him down uh, on the stand firm there of course a key aspect of this is not to overcommit too far forwards well, as Cor will Dakar, if there isn't another option, if he can find a way through earlier, he will definitely take it. Yeah. We might even see Jimmy just reactivating those two dwarfs stand up in the middle and then just staying put exactly where he is. Well, it'll be a pretty fast game if that's the way it goes, but uh, I, yeah, it's a lot better than over-pursuing when you're dwarves. Key part of Jimmy's strategy against the Dakar here. If there was one thing I might change around, it's putting another stand firm on the, uh, the far left corner as we look. Front edge of that could also be a stand firm, just making breaking that line even harder and keeping some mobility in the middle. You'll notice both the Slayer and the Runner are in slightly midfield positions where they can try and move across depending which way the elves are going. Jim has a perfect spread of stand firm across the pitch for this. This is uh, this is about as good a defense as or a good a good an example of how to handle the DACA as you're probably ever gonna see. Hopefully, well, I mean, I'm not biased. I don't know about you, but hopefully, it it, it does pay off here and uh, makes the elves have to do a bit more maneuvering. We'll see what happens. Um, if I have a bias, it's in favor of both of these coaches. So yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, so you know, this is a, this is a fun neutral. fact. A fun fact from my own personal research uh, that that I that I do before every game because I, I I really think uh, you know on commentary you, you got to put in your full effort. But did you know, Purple Chess? Did you know that both of these coaches have won a fumble major, and that no one has won both a fumble major and a CCL final game? So yeah, the winner of this game will guarantee a shot. Yeah, oh, weird. Weird how that works. <laughs> but 
But yeah, that's uh, Dude, that is actually goal. pretty exciting. Sounds you know, I, I've never really been a part of the fumble community or anything like that. But you know, it it's well it's well known in Blood Bowl as uh, as a as a home for some top coaching and top Blood Bowl. So having uh, it's surprising to me, frankly, that someone hasn't come through bowl. Well, a few people have made a final that have won fumble majors. Um, somebody called Purple Chest managed to do that fairly recently. <laughs> But so far, no one actually has put their name on both of those trophies. Anyone that did would certainly have a right to call themselves Chesney Hawks, because they would be the one and only. And uh, who do we do we do we have someone waiting in the final for this already, or do we not know who that's going to be? We yet? don't know who that's going to be. Uh, there's a uh, Kuetta with his uh, rowdy looking and very strength up chaos facing uh, I, um, I don't know some dwarf banger. Oh, Dionysian, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> now, has, has, has Dio won a Perp fumble, Darp. Major? Base, base, no, base. no, he hasn't got this you in fail. I'm on the right. Seems like the kind of guy who would have a chance at that. He certainly tried to. I think he's reached the second round once. Well, he'll have added motivation if he can get to the final <laughs> against one of these two guys. Absolutely. Not that one needs it, because of course, winning a chalice, you know, the fame, the women that come with yeah, it. Yeah, the the fan favorite on a player you'll never use again. It's, a, it's an important an important badge of honor. Now, as I said, he did swap those two around on that far left side, so that was a stand firm that went down. There is a route through for this AG5 ball carrier, of course. That's uh, three, Any route. two pluses <laughs> would make it straight past that blitzer the naked blitzer he it does he look like he's going to push down field here block. goes on the one d doesn't get it well kind of gets it <laughs> if anything that makes the route slightly harder it's now only a single two plus yep. but it is off tackle yep just weighing up the options here Certainly, Is the, there uh, any? no guard, the no guard at all for the two. Wood Elves, huh? No. The natural one turner and the, yeah, it looks like the natural one turner and the two dancers are coming that way. All right. How many two plus pluses? two plus to get the blodge on the other side out and round, and the tree, of course, keeping that death roller honest. How many two pluses can K Fog make? This is the slight worry. I love Jimmy's shape, but the slight worry about even advancing from the halfway line. Yeah. Because if these girls get away, they've got several turns of storing right up on your back line. Yeah. Now, the trade-off could be fair here for Jim. Maybe he prefers k Fog scoring on turn four or five than, uh, you know, turn seven or eight. Absolutely. So, yeah. Now, the, the whole of effort of the Dwarves is, of course, to try and take the ball if it looks at all possible. But to the very least, push those elves into a reasonably early score. Um, yeah, maybe maybe get some attrition while you're doing it. Despite kicking the ball to them, which would have made him very, very happy, his huge worry, of course, is that natural one-turner. And if we see him score for 1-1 in turn 16, then a 2-1 win looks uh, a very high possibility if, um, if K. Fogg can keep some of his rerolls dry. Rerolls that to get the base on the uh, uh, on the the super runner there. Yep, that's that's the piece that worries him. That's the one that could have got around the front of that dancer, and frankly, still can. But it's a, a three yeah. plus dodge to get off. That's kind of a rough. That's that's kind of a rough blitz to have to make. Though you're getting yourself surfed if you do it. You don't have much of a recovery. <laughs> you put the Slayer on the Dancer to cancel it, and you hit from the same space that the Dancer is currently marking, yeah. just in front of the runner of the catcher. But yeah, it's still a bleak position to have your uh, your best ball. Yeah, handling. still getting surfed there. <laughs> yeah, still getting surfed. Hey. I think Jim would be just as happy to concede a touchdown if he can, uh, you know, cast this uh, this mega dancer right now, which looks like that might be what he's thinking. Certainly that's the worrying one. Coming as it does with wrestle and strip ball and tackle. 
Of course, I assume, of course uh, have a show of hands. I assume right. K-Fog lost, uh, lost the dancer during the playoff run. Uh, yes, I think he lost one fairly early, and the, the, the rookie one has been, you know, emergency skilled up. Oh, no, he's going right in for it. Oh, gets the pow. Right. I did not see that slayer coming around for the, uh, <laughs> for the blitz. And the piling on, uh, the one player that matters on the pitch does nothing. Ball not in a great spot for him. Yeah, having not broken armor with the hit, I, I'm not sure I'd have piled on. But of course, it does keep the Slayer from being served. I did not, I did not see that Slayer tricky, coming yeah. around for that blitz. Doesn't look like Chat did either. That was a good play by Jim. You know. Turn, yeah, I like that uh, a lot. Turn... We were. I was too busy looking at the runner coming around the front somehow, and missed exactly. the Slayer coming up the back. Yeah. You know, but hey, turn three, he got a piling on hit. Didn't pay off, but piling on hit on the most important player in this game. You can't, you can't feel too bad about that. Le moment de vérité. Good tip for some of the parties I've been to as well. Not only worry about what's coming in your front, but always make sure nothing's coming up your back. <laughs> kill, kill, saw everything. Everything. <laughs> It's a reference to a movie that everyone assumes I automatically must love, but I do not. I think it's crap. Surely you love all film. No, I, I love a lot of films, but uh, don't love uh, Boondock Sanks. Wait, no. Ah, I fucked up. I fucked it up. That's not Boondock Sanks. That's um, uh, The Professional. Which I do love. That's a fantastic one. Yeah, yeah, Famir. Yeah, I know. I fucked it. I fucked it. Yes, man. But everyone assumes that because I'm from Boston, I love uh, Boondock Saints, and I just don't. Everyone assumes as an actor, I love movie. all film. And then my brother in law tries to watch <laughs> things like uh, Tell the Hagen Nights. You, you know what I don't love? I don't love when my replay freezes in Blood Bowl for no reason whatsoever. Okay, well, right then back. I'll do some talking for you. Uh, obviously, the uh, the Elves recovered their ball, which I'm not sure is a surprise to anybody, uh, despite the uh, the Dwarves getting dead rowdy and how they defended. The Elves are looking very, very thin now in this, uh, this deep stall. And a lot might depend if they can find a way through for the mass pack of Elves that are left way up the field. Oh. And I, I am back just in time to see a war dancer falling on his ass. Another reroll burned. Yeah. Of course, first half rerolls not hugely important. Um, that said, the elves are down to one, and if uh, if the dwarves can push this score in in turn five or six, that, that's a long time with only one reroll to try and stop these quite rowdy dwarves smashing your teeth in and getting a ball to the line. Absolutely. Ça cherche clairement le corps à corps. And now uh, we yeah, have Cord the Cord Knight, we've we've covered this one before, Cord Knight, but it's only poor people that have true Boston accents. I didn't grow up poor. Didn't grow up rich either, but I didn't grow up poor enough to have a Boston accent. Oh, sometimes it slips in there. It did a little bit on Boston. Yeah, that's one of the words. That's one of the words. I say wicked a lot. And if I'm drinking, I, I, I kind of slip into it. But that's about it. So basically, the dumber I am, I'm acting, the more Boston I sound. Not that that's in any way offensive. <laughs> no, not at all. Okay, so absolutely what we're seeing prioritized here is just getting as many elves back to try and make this stall happen deep in the yeah. dwarf half. And uh, taking down that, uh, that stand firm guard that was out on the edge has allowed a lot of these elves through. Jimmy's not going to be happy with how many elves he sees heading towards this ball. Absolutely. And also, uh, <laughs> how many have not headed off the pitch yet? Like, you know, you had the DACA, so it's been, or excuse me, the DACA, so it's been... Uh... You know, it's been limiting his hits, but uh, he really wants to get a couple of these elves off for the second half. Chances are now he's not going to be able to force a score uh, in time for a counter, like a reasonable counter score. 
So he's got to start thinking about killing some elves here. Tree, of course, as they so often do, has made itself utterly irrelevant to the entire of this half. It's not actually rooted, though, is it? Yes, it is. It is? Oh, Definitely. I've not... got the symbol oh, I don't have on my the, uh, screen. Uh, yeah, no. I, when I restarted the... When I restarted the... Uh, replay, it wasn't up. Now, what can Jimmy do to try and put some pressure down here? Obviously, the Blitzer and the Runner are going to come ballwards. But lots of other Dwarves have to get into some aggressive positions beforehand because he's probably going to want to do some go for it at some point. Yeah, I mean, as Chad are pointing out, I agree. I mean, maybe the best thing to do here is just to get yourself in some nice spaces and then try desperately to see if you get lucky with your first dodge on the death roller. And if you do, you can get rowdy right into that cage and hit the ball. If you don't, sure of course, can. you're taking out something on the edge of that cage and get some pressure ballwards that way. Um, it's probably worth that risk. I don't see any other way of stopping this. Boy, would it be poetic if that uh, if that death roller made a hero play like that. Oh, he's doing it. No, he had the break tackle. Yeah, break tackle pops on the first dodge. So now he's yeah. got to just consider. Yeah. So instead, he's going for the sidestep dancer and just creating a hole where the uh, where the runner and the blitzer can come and put some other pressure on. Still not chipping any dwarves. Up uh, any elves. But yeah. Uh, for the, uh, he really wanted to cut that roller to help prevent the wizard, so he didn't have to sack the uh, the reroll instead. So uh, it would have been pretty fitting for that to make the hero dodge in and hit the ball and kill the one turner. Absolutely, that would have been. I think the stream would have gone crazy, and Jimmy fans yeah. would have just. There'd have been a lot of tissues used <laughs> all over the country. <laughs> Absolutely. And so it is, of course, he couldn't cut the roller, as that's the entire reason he was persuaded to play yeah. Dwarves in the first place. It just wouldn't have been yeah. right. Jimmy is a man of honor, as well as a man of yups. <laughs> yep. So it looks like maybe PC... Uh, excuse me, I caught myself that time. Maybe, uh... Maybe uh, Kefo needs to start thinking about scoring here, but that's not quite enough dwarves in his face just yet to, to guarantee it. But with that death roller there, you know, it's in range to make that hero play that we've been talking about. Yep, yep. Yep. Uh, I think really key to that was the Slayer failing its jump up, a uh, skill I absolutely hate. Yeah. And that's meant there's uh, those two elves, which are bull side of all the dwarves that can come and try and reinforce this cage and create some kind of stall. He's also got the option to swap sides with that midfield blodge elf. I wouldn't be surprised if we see that involved. And the ball go He's right the way across the other side of the field. Yeah, and there it goes. Yeah, that, that last turn really highlighted uh, two, two long-standing purple chest uh, uh, pet peeves, huh? You've got piling on isn't as good as you think because you don't want to pile on all the time yeah. <laughs> and uh and jump up is a terrible skill because yeah that roller would have loved to pile on that word answer except he, he just can't because he's got to use it it's his best hope right now jump up's okay on ag4 and three but on ag2 it starts to look it, it's a two in, it's a one in three fail and that's that can be really dodgy particularly if it as it has prevents your slayer from even standing on its feet even getting in anybody's way, it just, there's so many times it limits you. I like it on that tree, though. That <laughs> oh, tree's absolutely, useless yeah. for, other, for other means, but that jump up block tree is about all you really need. Well, the great thing with jump up on a tree, of course, is it's about standing up. It's not necessarily about hitting from the ground. Exactly. And it, but it, it still, uh, it still lulls in certain coaches <laughs> to try and knock it down. Uh, so, well, getting, yeah. getting some major success against uh, a necro coach earlier. If in you're playoffs. banging on a tree, that makes as much sense as banging on a tree in the real world. <laughs> hey, let's not kink shame here. <laughs> oh, 
That's lovely. That last dodge so needed to keep yeah. that death roller off this one turner. Yep. A little scary on that having, one, but now. Having knocked down the good runner, it's uh, it was only the blitzer and the death roller that are really the risks here. And now we're definitely seeing at least one more turn of stalling. Again, the key question becomes how many L's can get recovered from this? How many are left at risk when the fail comes? With only one reroll left, I'm not sure we're going to see Kofo uh, throwing a reroll in to save any of these poor scrubs. They dodge or they Agreed. die. And at some point, Jim's going to just have to reasonably say, I'm not stopping. I, I'm not catching him, so I might as well put all my energy into trying to kill these elves off for the second half. Absolutely. Uh, at the I, very least, of course, he's got, uh, he'll have a turn eight, three elf bang, got two elves and a tree. Uh, and the same at the start of the second half. So if he can chip even a single elf or two before that, um, yep. things will start to look a little better for Jim. Right now, of course, no elves even knocked out. And that's got to yeah. be worrying at Jim. I mean, the story of the second half is going to be that move. I mean, the story of the game is that move 10 catcher, but... Jim, Jim likely going to have to drive down for eight turns and score and go to overtime uh, unless something drastically changes in this game. Yeah, and I mean, it's so, going to be a, so a twin-pronged twin attack in the second half, isn't it? He's going to have to leave enough dwarves around his ball to keep it safe from the rowdy yep. dancer. But at the same time, he's going to have to send a kill squad after that, that catch. Yeah. It's the only way this game and, gets won is for that piece dead. Absolutely, and the and the best chance he's got to do that is to uh, just peel back those layers of protection and kill a few elves off. But he's just getting nothing on the armor breaks right now. I mean, sadly for the spectacle, we could even see Core just not defending the second half, just putting all his effort into keeping mm -hmm. that one turner safe. That would be poetic justice uh, uh, <laughs> for Jim. A uh, a uh, the back off and sit in the corner. A strategy he is. Uh, employed to some great success and failure in the past yeah he still found a way to get himself pitch cleared doing that once i think yes i mean you know your mileage may vary coach however you want to coach it's not something i love doing firstly because i think it's all your eggs in one basket and i'd rather win Absolutely. by playing blood bowl than not playing it and secondly it, it's a, a difficult subject but there is a gaming morality for me that's not how i want games played um if we end up all trying to not play Blood Bowl as much as possible, there's an easy answer to that. Just don't even fire the client. Ooh. Don't start the game. Does he have something here? Is yeah, he chaining, I think he is does. He he's the he's roller at least going to get that roller somewhere where it's more use. Of course, that's the uh, the blitz gone, but... Oh, he's got a hit on the ball here. Yeah, I like this. He can just clear a spot for the for the... For the runner to come through and hit the ball. If he had two blitzes, that would definitely work, Skuro. Oh shit! Oh yeah, he already um, blitzed. In Blood yeah, Bowl, you blitzed. only get one blitz. Um, <laughs> Thank in most you. of the versions I've played. <laughs> so whilst yeah, he is going to yeah. get a nice hit on an elf, he would enjoy hitting here, and he can get some certainly some ball contact, some good threat to this cage. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He can base the ball, and if you read Reddit, that is as good as winning. There we are. <laughs> That's pretty much game over. Um, but yeah, oh no, that... he stopped short. He stopped short of base in the ball. Okay. I, again, I would imagine that's so he doesn't get a nice a nice hit using the ball as the assist. Now, if you want to hit that runner, you've got to put an elf on it before you bang it. Exactly. And instantly, that is what we're seeing happen. I gotta say, I'm really enjoying how both these coaches are handling this game thus far. Yeah, I don't think we've seen any huge surprises yet. Um, nope. The, the sort of false Dacker not falling quite as far back as a Dacker does allowed Core that space that when he saw the gap on the side, he thought there's, you know, there's only one stand firm piece. The blitzer behind it was a little weak. He went for it. He got through with enough elves. All the elves have come teaming afterwards as soon as they can. Jimmy's pressured this backfield stall really, really nicely. Uh, I loved that creative move with the Slayer using jump up for what it is good for, which is creating movement from the ground rather than hitting from the ground, particularly with an AG2 piece, putting the death roller into a much rowdier position. Hello, Unseen Walker. How you doing this morning? Fortunately, there still looks to be just enough elves that makes this stall incredibly mm. easy. And as you've said, we, we haven't seen a single elf leave the fitch, pitch. And not only is that disappointing for everyone, because everyone loves seeing elves die. It's, of course, yeah. going to be really disappointing for Jimmy. 
Yeah, I mean, you've got you've got the KO there, but the double babes are probably going to wipe that one right out. Oh, yeah, I had missed that one had finally gone off. Yeah, yeah but I mean, a KO is basically irrelevant. <laughs> Maybe two KOs and, she, and you got to hope that one stays off. As you said, but... two babes and two rolls on it. If that's not back for the second yeah. half, I'll, uh, I'll be only mildly surprised because Nuffle sometimes just takes the piss. Now that needed to be a pow. I'm not sure I love that. That's, that was a good chance of getting some L's removed if it didn't pow. I'm quite surprised we didn't just see both of those L's take up uh, more defensive positions, but Core does love to take a hit when he thinks it's on. Of course, about 55% of getting the yellow gorgeous ones there. And anything else would have been pretty worrying. So he could probably lose an L for two and still call this a you know an all good first half. Yeah. There's at least one person I know would be looking at losing both those elves and still thinking this is fine. <laughs> Jimmy here just trying to create some risk, making sure that every dodge is at least a one in six, trying to pull that final reroll or Force the score if that final reroll does come. If the stall just doesn't look anything other than a, you know, even a mild risk at this point, you probably bang it in and give the dwarves a couple of turns. Yeah, we're in we're in uh, we're in roller foul territory as well here to maximize uh, yeah. chances of killing elves. Absolutely. I mean, it is going off, so. At this point, you're probably trying to make sure you're hitting with Mighty Blow, and then, as you said, following up with a nice roller foul. Yeah. Question is, who is he hitting? I think it might be the Rog lineman. No, he's gone with the Dancer. Okay. Yeah, he really wants to get one of those Dancers out. Still nothing. Mighty Blow hit there, too. In that case, we're probably seeing a foul on the, uh, the Blodger that's down right by where the roller is now. Yeah, I think so. It's really the only reasonable foul at this point here. You can put the Slayer in for an assist, though it does put the Slayer the wrong side of where you want it, really. I think with the... Well, at uh, this point, I don't think he's bothering to try and stop this uh, score early. Yeah, you're probably right. Okay, but it does come around to the, the slightly more aggressive position. I like where he's put it there. Ooh, doesn't... Oh, wow, he really... He wanted to foul the war dancer, I guess. Yeah, that was a two dodges to get there, though. Not sure that's. Uh, yeah, now just that, not sure that, that war dancer is a good enough piece that I would have wanted that. I might have just taken the two assist foul on the uh, the one that was right under my gun. I think I agree. And Core instantly responding by saying, "I can stall this till turn eight, and I'm going to." Yeah. Of course, yesterday on a stream, he did forget to score uh, in turn eight, <laughs> uh, which well, amused maybe... quite a lot of people watching. I don't think we're going to see the game same again. Now, interestingly, <laughs> if you know what Cole's doing here, oh, there's the, the screen. Wow. Does that give now, Jimmy an opening? He's got just uh, enough of a, a, a screen here on the ball. But I don't think Unfortunately, the death roll is on its ass, so it can't yeah. get there. Uh, even if it did, the reason those elves are two steps away from where the ball is, is being positioned, of course, is to make it a double dodge to get anywhere near that ball. Uh, that's a very, very effective screening technique. But now Jim, at minimum, can get his uh, his his war dancer foul in. Yep. And at the same time, I'd be prioritizing. You know, it's all about the base. You can at least make it a one in thirty-six for him to score. And sometimes those fail. Not not doing it again with the death roller. Fascinating. The death roller moving early and not fouling the the uh, the war dancer. Okay. He saw a nice chain he wanted to use. Not entirely sure what that's gaining him, but. Oh, okay. Oh, it's hit on the ball. Yeah, he's gonna. Yeah, get taking the taking the push is gonna create that hit. I'm liking this now. Yeah. Well played by Jim. Really nice spot by Jimmy there. Not entirely sure it needed the roller to do it. I thought there was a, a Stanford Dwarf could have gone into that same spot. And the roller could still have been available for a foul. But it's a beautiful spot, that he, a beautiful plan he's come up with. Now let's see if he can Although make it work. Oh, unfortunately, he needed getting... really a pow on the second one of those. Yeah. Oh, I think I'm a little bit ahead of you. Did you just see the injury? 
Yeah, I've just seen the injury now. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah. But the second of the yeah, chains really that, needed a power on that getting, one. Yeah, Finally an elf off the pitch. Might have scuttled that, that hit. Although that injury makes uh, makes it possible again for a dodge off with the Slayer. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Yes, it does. So if this is a pal, there is still a route through. No, he's not doing it. No, he's not doing it. Oh, but he got another injury there. And finally, this AV7 starting to break. I think for the good of the game, that is a fantastic thing to see. Sadly, Agreed. for the good of the spectacle, it really increases the odds that the elves just run and hide in the second half. Oh, all the armor breaks popping off there. That one's just a stun, though. Does he still have a hit on the ball here with this runner, maybe? He does. Yeah, yeah he does. Yeah, he does. Just would have preferred that Slayer doing the hit. <laughs> Absolutely, for the mighty blow. And if the original plan had worked... Oh, dubs. Doesn't get him. And no tackle on that runner, but it's still a 1 in 36. Or a 1 in 1000 and uh, something. Mm. If he chooses to blitz it off with the dancer, which of course is the way he's going. <laughs> it's better odds. But the dubs comes as well, <laughs> but not the quads. Making it exciting to the very end, but then traditional war dancer armor break there. Thick skull keeps him on the pitch. And the score. We all know war dancers come with the mighty blow <laughs> skill. It just doesn't ever show. Well, Jim, Jim did about as much as you could ask from uh, from the dwarf team to try and give himself a chance here. Didn't work out in the end, but some fantastic play there uh, to get some real opportunities that that we didn't even see. Uh, off the really loved that uh, that double chain that he saw to get himself that hit on the ball carrier. Yeah. I thought that was some fantastic play. I hadn't spotted it. Um, I'm going to say it because I was eating my sandwich, up. but that is just a lie. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, I mean, I was so fixated on on getting anything out of that death roller for for a foul that you know I just didn't think about just being able to give up on that, use it positionally, and then create those chains. That was a really good play by Jim, and that's probably what he was doing was, that was, turn before when he double dodged it. No, it was absolutely it was a fantastic little move that he saw there. It really did open up that ball hit, um, and actually, it meant the stall that I liked of the. You know, the screen slightly away from the ball was uh, was what put it at risk. Had they been one nearer the ball, that wouldn't have been available. Now the so uh, really, the really one nice. turn is not is not off the table here. Movement seven helps them here, but uh, it's still pretty it's still pretty tough. Kfo going to give him the shot it's, at it though. Not going to put the uh, the side steppers it's up. Not going to happen, Skuro. Well, I mean, but there's hope. You can always you can always take the chance. He's yeah, got. I, I mean, mean, he's got to try it. You know. One day, Jessica Alba might just knock on the door and say, I've heard all about you. But it, it's, it, again, <laughs> these things don't happen. But they're always possible. Hey, it's not our job. It's not our job to predict the future. It's our job to talk incessantly about the present. Uh, that is true. <laughs> now, really key factor there. We saw two elf chips right at the end of the half. Um, we're going to see possibly two more here and start to get the elves down. But... We did see the apothecary go in on the second one, so anything that gets hit now stays hit. As widely as, predicted, as though, as the two babes were enough to bring the KO back. Literally what I was about to say. <laughs> Glad we're on the same page here. That's mainly because you stole my note. <laughs> I, knew, I knew that would piss you off. <laughs> Yeah, I think if anything, I would be setting for the riot here. I mean, dwarves can one turn, but it's so much actually, I think, more likely to get a riot and be able to do something with it, even then, very hard in two turns with dwarves. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, uh, perfect no, defense. Jimmy did not have way. the ball. Uh, Jimmy, we're assuming, got the, uh, the kickoff and chose to kick it to the elves. Yeah, that was, that was P, uh, PTK's offense. So this this game is very much alive for Jim. 
it's just you look at that team and there's one massive defensive player for for the elves and and then that and then that one turner that will just end the game on turn 16 uh if he's still on the pitch so it's uh a little bit of despair times for jim I'm wondering if we even see the uh, the one turner line up in one of the backfield corners with a tree diagonally in front of it, <laughs> which would be funny. Not actually very effective, mm -hmm. but incredibly funny. Yeah, that actually would be hilarious. It would be it would be a disappointment for the enjoyment of the second half of this game, but it would be funny. Although the risk there, though, the risk there, though, is if you're just going to if you're going to give Jimmy all the all, all the hits on the rest of your team, you might not have enough players to retrieve the ball on turn 16. So. Which is why I think we may, particularly if we see an elf or two get chipped here, we may well just see uh, the elves run away en masse in the second half and say, fine, we'll one yeah. turn you to win. Oh, no, par pitié. Yep. The only real answer to that is to try to thin your ball defense down, show a bit of leg, try and pull the elves into thinking they can stop you by attacking the ball, and at the same time send a kill squad heavily armored after the rest of the elves. Hope it doesn't get too far away to help with the cage. So let, let me ask you, uh, Purple Chest, is the, it, 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 in the in the expected situation on turn 16, where Jim has a full 11 players and he's getting one turn down. What's his best bet? Is it just back line, spread out tackle, and make him have to make, what is it, three plus dodges through tackle? Yeah, I mean, because it's it's agility five, you, you can't stop it. Um, yeah. But yeah, back lining is, I mean, it's the only way it gets done. Yeah. There's, there's no point like trying it. to deny pushes because at move 10 and sprint, it doesn't need pushes. Um, I'd probably still put three stand firm on the line just because he will get take a push if it's available because you don't want to use go for it if you can avoid them. Yeah. So you put three stand firm on the line and then you try and spread your tackle out so that every square has tackle and every square has two tackle zones on it on the back line and you just hope. And then Nuff will get uh, you. I think, I think you got a couple more turns, Faymir. I think you need like a turn nine uh, sure hands fail for him to drop the early GG. All right, well, half time. We've got one nothing to the elves. Dwarves coming in on offense. Going to start off, get their four hits. May maybe, maybe just three, three full hits on three elves. Uh, yep. We'll see what happens as we go into it. I am going to go refill my coffee real quick. I'll be right back. Uh, Purple I'll Chest, try and take make it away. What you do, and then I'll do the same. So, what are the key things to look for here? Are the elves going to set anything forward at all other than two in the tree? Are they going to try and draw the dwarves in, get them out of position? Are they going to set even for a blitz? Or are they just going to run away like the innate cowards they are? I think that's exactly what Kors considering. He is setting up forwards. He is looking for a blitz or a misfield. Of course, without a wizard, that's really his best hope here if he is going to turn them over and not have to rely on the one turn. is either a blitz or a misfield uh, or a deep kick that he can get between that line of scrimmage and the ball receiver. Uh, already, though, he's a... You know, that it's getting enough elves in the way to really stop the ball then getting back into the pack is going to be tricky with this view, but... Hence, he's gone with the offset line of scrimmage, an all-too-popular setup at the moment. Incredibly useful for this number, where you do want to try and outbalance the opposition. You do want to create some spaces, but often just used by people that have seen it, don't understand why they're using it, and think it looks cool and a bit different. Rather like people using electric scooters. I... Why? No, Skuro's gone to uh, to get himself a sandwich, some coffee, uh, kiss his dogs. Absolutely. Outside and see if the American Revolution 2 has started. Uh, I think I think bit. we're I, th I think we'll be good for the rest of the game uh, before that kicks off. We'll see though. But I am uh, I'm back now. If you needed to go uh, do the same, I shall certainly do that. Also, hello, Volkayo. 
Just before I go, though, I do want to point out uh, we've got both runners on, of course, just in case there is a ball sack, you know, having something else with that mobility and that speed, as we saw in Jimmy's last game. Also, perhaps a handoff option. If you're getting pinned in on one side, you can create some space by moving just one receiver out the other way. And if the other person completely ignores it, then you can sometimes use it to score. The anti-blitz defense, so we're seeing that elf wall that normally more associated not with a rowdy team but with a more agile team but of course Jimmy's key fear here is either a misfield or a blitz and they've both abandoned the left of the field as we look at it and of course the ball hasn't gone anywhere near that which would at least have been interesting Ooh, quick snap here doesn't mm, doesn't really help but it actually does. It lets him uh, immediately get off that uh, that tree, which is nice. Maybe he can get that turn, that first turn route for the drive would be lovely. Jim would love to see this ball get caught by the uh, by Moradam, the runner here, and just put to bed any uh, any fears of uh, one and nine pickups. And amazingly. PTK's double babes not paying off uh, for that for that uh, rookie lineman. Whoa! Double skulls right off the bat. Jim down a re-roll. Second half. The equity not looking great. Can't can't be too happy about that. Instant re-roll though. Yeah, I mean, yeah. What else is he supposed to do, though? Corn Knight had to just delete his reroll there. Got two left. I think in Jim's eyes too. This is this game. Uh, unless he can kill that one turner, it's probably not going overtime. So. Uh, so yeah, uh, Kfog not opting to do the hide in the corner. Uh, so a little bit of a uh, little bit of respect given there. We'll see if he gets punished for that decision though, uh, as elves maybe start dropping like flies. I I mean I like this. I think if there's a way forwards here for Jimmy, it's trying to draw the elves into some kind of fight. Yeah. I totally agree. Uh, PC, uh, excuse me, Purple Chest. I, I don't know if you saw it or not, but there was a uh, first roll dub skulls by Jim into an instant re-roll. Right. <laughs> was so was not pleasant. Of course, uh, negatively impacting his equity there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's been covered. But <laughs> but I mean, yeah, he had to re-roll. Like, I mean, he knew. Hundred <laughs> percent. I didn't even acknowledge the sc the double skulls by the time the re-roll came in. Well, I mean, that is what they're for. There is absolutely no point saving all your re-rolls and losing the game. Oh, well, somewhere J five just got hard. Fuck off. Is that your spy camera telling you that, or is it in some way related to the game? <laughs> we have a mental link. Okay. I know every time he's got an erection. It must bother you. I think that's, you know, at least once a week, isn't it? Ah, I'm fine <laughs> once a week. Well, he's he's a, he's got a couple years on me. It takes him a few days to warm himself up. Now, the Elves, of course, defending entirely across the other side of the field from the ball. Yeah. Anyone confused by that, why he's defending a space the Dwarves definitely don't want to in any way <laughs> go into, um, what he's defending is the natural one, Turner. And I, I do think we're seeing the Elves already decide we're just not going to defend this touchdown. Um, yeah, for a moment there, I was like, oh, Jim might have gotten his team a little bit split off, but then I, then I remembered that there's not really going to be... A concerted defense this half. Nope. No, Zoom, I haven't done any. I've been I've been too busy. That's why I haven't been streaming either. 
I've been too busy with my additional free time uh, to uh, to work on that stuff. It's been a, kind of a nightmare of a of a month for me. Good in good productive ways. I've been getting other stuff done, but uh, no time for streaming and painting for another month or so, I think, and then I'll be back. I'm uh, quite confident of getting some blood bowl in over the next week or two because I have a tax bill looming. Uh, my tax return <laughs> needs to be in at some point before the end of January. And there's nothing I love more than massively procrastinating and finding something to do that isn't myself. <laughs> tax Fair bill. enough. Yeah, my uh, as a freelancer in America, my taxes are a bit complicated and frustrating. I do them myself. It's not that it's not that hard, but it involves itemizing every single thing I've spent money on <laughs> in the yeah. past year, which is a yeah. little stressful and, uh, and, and, and tiring. And of course, it's quite a creative process in some ways, deciding what is going to be tax exempt in your eyes. Yes, well, as I'm currently being recorded, I won't speak too much to my strategies on that one. Oh, God, oh, I'm going to leave like it that overtime, isn't it? Well, not overtime, losing to the one turn. Overtime at best. I wonder if I should have just eaten the dub skulls and, like, you know, hoped to lure K-Fog in. Uh, mm. That might have been an oh. idea. But um, I would just instinct instant re-roll, to be fair. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I mean, I absolutely agreed with it. But now that you've said that, I mean, I, I do think trying to draw these elves into a fight would be a good idea. Yeah. I don't know how the hell you do it, but perhaps eating that dub could have done it. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, it, it puts you on, you know, like after after that blitz against the chaffs, like it's not fun being on the back foot for your entire drive, is it? And even if they're being yeah. safe moves first, you're still on the back foot for your entire drive, and you don't really want to be on the back foot against fucking woodies. I, I think I'd rather. It might have been a good idea. Yeah, yeah it might have been. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. Yeah, so, yeah. so instinct was just I, like I, nope. <laughs> yeah. I still think I'd rather lose the game on turn sixteen than lose the game on turn nine personally. <laughs> yeah, true, true. <laughs> Fair point. True. You know, it's not nothing's a given, obviously, but like he still is going to have to roll a couple of dice that aren't ones to win the game on turn sixteen. Yeah. You and, know, but then even if he doesn't, he's still fifty fifty to win because <laughs> he can win the exa toss. E exactly. So I think uh, personally, I think that's the right call. But uh, I'm not sitting here with my fumble major trying to get to the finals of CCL. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'll, I'll I am, off. however, the winner three, the winner five of the only league that matters, the SFL. Ha! Got it in. To me, the real prize here, of course, is that whoever does go through to the final is going to at least say they're the equal of me as a coach having won a fumble major and got to a chalice final. Now that is uh, maybe, what do you think of uh, Sulphur's, Sulphur's comment there in chat, uh, Purple Chest? What if Jim did score early here? Then he loses over a more extended period, but it, again, it's not a terrible <laughs> idea, just just bang, I mean, bang it in and, uh, and again hope for a kickoff result that gives you a blitz or uh, a perfect That's defense the thing is or maybe, a pitch maybe invasion the odds that... don't shift that much yeah is, uh, is uh, i think the point you know like i think there maybe could be more things that can happen to help him on defense yeah. and then can prevent the one turn at this point you know yeah i mean wood elves it is definitely more likely to score a two turner but perhaps not a five turner um, it also might just confuse yeah. Core. Uh, <laughs> it might just go. It's probably not for oh. very long, but <laughs> like I, I agree with the mentality. You can't really do that, but I, I think that's not as crazy as it initially. No, sounds. again, just like eating that dubs wasn't. I mean, perhaps there are times you just got to think. I, I need something that's going to change this story here. What is it that does that? Like, there's basically no kickoff result on turn 16 that's going to help him. From that, from that perfect one. Defense where he like, steps with three stand firms. Yeah, perfect right defense won't change much. Turner, or a yeah. pitch. Of, yes, it will. If you put three stand firms right in front of the natural one turner, uh, they need to remove. Yeah, one yeah, or, yeah, I suppose that's true. Yeah, or a pitch of vagrant that knocks it over, or a rock that knocks it out. So other yeah. than those ones, you're right. There's just nothing in the kickoff return <laughs> table. <laughs> yeah, but what? But on, the, but on the flip side, on on turn. You know, midway through on defense, what's he got? Yes. A blitz? Yeah. yeah, just a blitz, probably. Okay, yeah, fair enough. 
If there's a rock into a one turner on turn 16 to push this into overtime, that this would be the greatest game of Blood Bowl ever. Played. Would be fantastic. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah, Blizzard would be nice. There was a Blizzard to start the game, and it went away, Kill. Went away on the very first kickoff uh, yep. table result. Of course, it is the one thing that lovely dancer lacks is Juggernaut. So a perfect defense on putting three stand firms right in front of the one-turner is genuinely a, a you know reasonable yeah, shot you're... at happening. Absolutely. Um, that is probably Jim's best chance. I actually Power think Jim's gone with an slightly too many in this cage. If you are going to try and tempt the elves into attacking it, I think three around it, and you leave the, uh, the yeah. corner the furthest away from them open, it just gives you one more dwarf <laughs> to attack them with. Now that it's so think... far away from where the action is, I certainly think, you know, pull a couple of dwarves back again, see if you can tempt the elves into coming for the ball in some way. They're not going to, but if you can tempt them, Maybe that's a way, and then you can catch them, try and catch them in the midfield and kill an elf or two. But with only two elves gone, they're looking at a tree and eight elves for that one turn, and that's plenty to fetch that ball, feed the natural, and win in turn 16. Uh, Jimmy's seen that film, so the question is, how does he change the ending? KOs really aren't going to do it for him. Uh, well, it did it for him to start the half. That that loner somehow stayed out. Yeah, yeah, that's true. We did get one that, that pulled a one. But almost assuredly not going to uh, be <laughs> of much effect. Oh, Can't re-roll that, sadly. Just can't. Has to keep them dry in case there's a one, in case there's overtime. He's lost that one on the dubs early. Stop fucking firing everything! Ah! Had that have been mighty blow on a dancer, we might have seen it. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. Uh, this is why I don't love massively overskilled slayers. They are such a target, and you may as well just let them be that. That might no, but they do accrue that... SPP very quickly, so it, you know it, it happens. You end up with bloaty slayers. Yeah, he might as well have just kept them dead there because he's not playing in the final if he gets there. Nope. He's gone, daddy gone. <laughs> they blame your coach. I was just, I was literally in the process of saying, wouldn't it be something if this Roger killed this Slayer <laughs> right when that happens? Of note as well is that of the Elves' two injuries, one is another missing next game. Uh, in fact, they both are, aren't they? Yeah, one's a missing, and I think one's, is it a niggle? No, just both missing. So both the Elves that are out will not make the final if the Elves get there. Yeah. I say if, they just won't make the final. Interesting, Jimmy. There, choosing not to defend this, uh, the rowdy war dancer and his friend, trying to suck them up towards the cage and maybe take that dancer out, but they're not. They're not falling for it. You could plant a tree and strip all its bark off, and the wood elves still wouldn't go near it. Yeah. Well, this will be a spectacle that will be somewhat changed with the new edition, where the uh, the natural one turners aren't aren't going to be a thing anymore. But um, still not going to yeah. love what else. <laughs> that was promised by the rule book, and yet actually, if you choose to roll on the stat up table, um, move up is a very very achievable um, outcome. Agility up, not so much. So we may well see some uh, some very fast pieces but not with the uh, Agility 5 on top. But doesn't it cap? I thought Fuck movement caps so you could never actually have so a natural one-turner. Jesus I think you do need fucking one -push. Christ! Yeah. Which, I mean, is n basically nothing, but st it's something.
Yeah, oh, move do we, we the GG? <laughs> caps at nine, I think, doesn't it? I don't know. Yeah, it must, it must cap at nine because you can still have sprint, so you can get to twelve, but not thirteen. Yep. I mean, I've always said, at half joking, that I, I would say, you know, if you capped armor at ten, I would cap total movement at ten. So whether you do it with moves up or with go for it, I, I just think no player should be able to move more than ten. That would require three pushes. Uh, and perhaps that is a bit mm. too much. Just just a, just a flat rule that doesn't matter what your movement in sprint is, you can never move more than 10, 10 squares in a turn. Yeah, absolutely. When steam train yeah, were invented, yeah. they always said that, it, you know, that if if the steam train went over 30 miles an hour, humans' heads would fly off. Um, and that was sort of my only basis for justifying it, that no Blood Bowl player could move more than 10 spaces or their head would fly off. Yeah, I don't hate that. The problem with it is that even with Juggernaut, you, you know, stand firm, you could just prevent those three spaces being achievable. All right. Well, Jim has dropped the early GG. Pretty good timing, I think, on it. Could yep. shift the balance in his favor here. We've seen that in matches before, folks. I mean, he definitely needs to. That's uh, that's two dwarfs out now, and both out for the final as well. Things are looking bleak in, in several directions. Once for Jimmy here, yeah, he, uh, he now doesn't have enough dwarfs to backline effectively against the one turner. I think that's what will have pushed them into the GG. That's the definite tipping point. That means that uh, one turner will be able to go through on twos, not threes. <laughs> The elves have somehow managed to resist coming for a fight. Which means there just hasn't been a chance to chip anything that he wants to. The natural is still alive. The dance <laughs> is still alive. It's all awful. Excellent and the kill squad point hasn't point. managed to reach anywhere near the elves it wants to kill. No. This game pretty much all came down to that one palm hit on the, uh, on the natural one-turner, I think. Yeah, which, again, considering just how important it was, I, I didn't I didn't necessarily hate it as much as I hate some POM, because if you had taken it, hugely different game. And the elves were probably always going to recover that ball anyway, so I, I didn't hate it. Yeah. I agree. I, it was definitely the right call to, to pile on on it it's a shame he didn't get anything for it but uh here we go jim scores doesn't roll another die i assume i ooh, i'd have thought so there's there's nothing easily hittable here so no no real benefit and uh yeah the, pretty much as we predicted before the half that was the uh the path of least resistance for k-folk there and he kind of he actually came out on top <laughs> all things considered yep and so uh, yeah he took out more dwarfs than the dwarfs took out elves no Both the KOs there, do come back KOs. this time, so now it is literally just about does the natural do its awful evil thing. Core didn't even need to re-roll that half, chipped two dwarfs, and lost I think one elf in total, was it? Jim yeah. is not going to be able to get tackle on every square here, or is he? Oh, he might be able to. Yeah, he, he, can, get, yeah, he can get tackle on every yeah. square, but it, there's still those just two buttons barely. around the outside. I mean, that of course means that the dodge won't work, so there's three two pluses, unless he gets pushes, there's three two pluses and three uh, go for it's required. So that is six twos he call will need to roll. And he's only got a re-roll to cover any one of them. Um, no, I'm lying, he's got sure feet, doesn't he? No, he doesn't. Um, he has no, sprint, he but no sure, sure feet. feet. So yeah, he's going to have to avoid, six, avoid two ones out of six. Three ones out of six. Two ones out of yeah. six, yeah. So Jim's best hope here, probably uh, still lying in those kickoff results, but, uh, you know, elves can roll some ones. Absolutely. They've still got to get the ball, get it into the hands of the one-turner. Um, and I know that seems simple, but it's still adding just those little tiny percents that can make things go wrong. And then even when that's done, as I said, there are going to be six two-pluses that need to get rolled here and only one re-roll to cover them. Uh, until Blood Bowl 2020, when you can use all three row rolls that he's got to cover them, because that's great. That's definitely an improvement. 
<rire> Quel a été ton meilleur moment dans ta carrière de joueur, Bob Le jour où j'ai marqué mon premier touchdown. Juste avant, j'avais arraché la tête d'un type qui m'avait saoulé dans les vestiaires. Pour rire, je lui ai collé le ballon sur la nuque et j'ai envoyé valser le tout dans l'embut adverse. Les arbitres ont dit que c'était parfaitement valable. Donc, touchdown So if we do get to the point where the Natty has it in hand, it is, and still has the reroll, that is a 67% chance uh, for the score. So about a one in three for Jimmy to stop it. But of course it does add some things in depending where the kick lands, depending on the kickoff result. There is more than just a 33% chance of this getting stopped. But it's a bleak situation. There's no denying Absolutely. that. And then, as Jimmy says, if he loses the uh, if he loses the ball in overtime, it's it's another bad situation. Then you can't backline because then they just seize the field and, and come in in a couple of turns' time. And that way, we do just see a natural just boom through, probably without even having to dodge more than once. Yeah, it's going to be real rough for Jim uh, if he's on defense in overtime here because he, he doesn't have a full team he's down to 10 players so he can't let chevron up there nope. core gets a four three roll now it is a nice deep kick that's no real use at all because elves are so fast yeah, yeah he can get right up there to hand it off and here we go yeah. doesn't he even need to throw Catch doesn't pop. So now it's, as I said, can he avoid two ones out of six? With a reroll, that's a 66% chance. Easy. Even without it, a 33% <laughs> chance. And yes, he can. What a boring well. waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> well, Interesting, he didn't game. choose that route. He so chose far. to put a three plus in uh, with dodge to help and then a two plus and then a two plus two plus off it with tackle on the first one and no tackle on the second i'm almost certain glorious. that is better than just going around no, here, so like a buffalo win. girl until i'm um, victorious sadly yeah I i'm defend. not even going to do the maths i'm just going to assume it is um, i'm just yeah sadly, assuming tear fog is right is a, is a fair thing to assume yeah absolutely Thank you very much, Lofty BB. Yeah, it was oh, I tried. Not quite the spectacle we hoped for, but you, you pulled off some really fun, good plays in that first half, Jim, trying to Thanks. pressure that backfield stall when he'd broken through the line. I really liked what you did with the double push to get a hole in and get the ball hit, but yeah. me too. It wasn't going to be. End, yeah, end of the I've day, got you the got a palm. You got one palm hit on that catcher. That's about <laughs> all you could expect to get on him. Didn't yeah. fire for you, but if it didn't, you know, in the alternate universe, uh, where the world isn't completely on fire, uh, maybe that one hit, and uh, <laughs> that catcher wasn't around for two thirds of the game. Yeah, exactly. Like that would have been huge, wouldn't it? Like getting to get into Pom him, I was I was going for that all day. <laughs> oh, it would have been we huge. All, and it would have been marvelous. Yeah. Is, yeah, we it were all looking marvelous. at the runner dodge. <laughs> we were looking at the runner dodging to make that hit, and uh, no one was calling. Both in chat and in commentary, we're calling the Slayer. The Slayer Blitz instead, yeah. and when you pulled that off, we're like, ah, oh, that was a revelation. That was great. <laughs> yeah, Much that was, yeah, that was the downside of having to wrestle on the blit, one dice blitz. Yeah. Because that guy was the one that was supposed to close the back. <laughs> <laughs> but there's no way I'm re-rolling <laughs> at, at successful dice <laughs> even in that situation because the the, the fail yeah. state there is even even worse even worse like getting a hit on it was bad mainly for me killing like the problem with getting the hit was the pylon hit on it because even if you get me down i'll probably just take the ball with the ball dance and runs away anyway oh yeah yeah I had but no... the kill the kill is the problem <laughs> i had no illusions of uh, <laughs> stopping you scoring but i was like if i can kill the one turner with this palm hit yeah. please <laughs> please game yeah Absolutely. I mean, that's that's long term how you uh, how you get the win, isn't it? Is take that one turner out. Suddenly, it's a very very different situation for everything. Yeah. Um, but as, I mean, yeah. Even if even if you hadn't pommed, the recovery options were so bleak that even that Slayer on its feet didn't look particularly useful to you. Yes, I was also I, I was also going to go for the double the double dodge to foul it as well, but I, I used break yeah. tackle on the first one. 
<laughs> so I just, had to, I just had to make it look like I just wanted to mark the dancer, but I was totally going to go for the second dodge if I could. Like, <laughs> out the, uh, the upside for Jimmy is no more Blood Bowl for at least a week and a half. Yes, so your yeah. Legion, your thousands of flat fans managed to uh, persuade you next season to do some sort of meme run. Yeah, <laughs> yeah hopefully. What is, what, what the course fan, doing? another game for them to watch uh, as he goes on to the final. Yeah, good yeah. game. Elves gone into elf me three games. To get here. Yeah, you know I couldn't have lost to a nicer person. So congrats, PT. Player. Thank you. Wow. As I did point out, Core, you now match the uh, the most successful Blood Bowl player in history in having both a fumble <laughs> title and a chalice <laughs> final. <laughs> can, you, can you go one better? Wow, stealing my stealing my expert commentary and analysis PC once again. <laughs> I, I, the cat the, the catcher is still living, so I still hope. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> Leave yeah, it to PTK to show up by not playing the game. <laughs> More than hope, I think what what you're going to do for us, PTK, and I think it, it's wonderful for the whole community what you're doing here, is pointing out exactly why Blood Bowl 2020 has nerfed one turners. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like even even in this iteration where I need to do, where I got a, some naked an extra naked two plus, it's it's still 64.4 percent to score, including yeah. pick up and handoff. It's ridiculous. It's not even fun. Yes. Um, I mean, I, I also I really liked your route. I thought you would. Uh, it would be the Buffalo Girl and go around the outside. Uh, much better your route. I haven't bothered doing the math, but I know it is. It's um, uh, course, straight up. You had two dodges and then a, a, only one two plus that's off dodge. Yeah. So it's a Damn, three plus no with dodge, two dwarfs. plus with dodge, and a three. Uh, Time to raise 100 bucks to get the, Jimmy to play birds. I think the last sequence of it is it's like 5% better just that's to do it directly as well. Well, I did, I did slam around the outside, and that was 67% uh, uh, minus a few hundred. Yeah, I think it's about 70% with a reroll going the other way because that's less use for a reroll. Yeah, having said that, I I think it's about 40% to do the, the two, three, two, two, two. It'll be close. It'll be close either way, won't it? Like, it's... yeah, it is. But it's it, the main route with the three plus. It's it's more like likely to work on direct dice, which yeah. of course they know what I'm coming is. Even if I had four reroll, still worth taking. To within yeah. inch of a fucking life. A uh, little bit better odds, but with a reroll, it's about the same odds because again, there's not many excellent team rerolls in going the way I did. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but it is that kind of mean I don't think actually knocking any dwarf off did any difference for the one turner for that reason yeah. interestingly your route yeah, is better so. um, it's without reroll it's better by about 8% uh, with yeah. reroll it's better but uh, that drops to about a percent and a half yeah it's because that's not, not many rerolls in it yeah um, it's so I mean I didn't need to check it but I wanted to yeah. check my own sanity I knew so, it would be a better route yeah, so as long as there's not, as long as that one with tackle I can use as a base around, as long as you cannot feel all eight tackle, the three plus is still absolutely fine. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but that catcher is all the reasons why we shouldn't have pieces like that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's despicable, and you are you're you're teaching the whole community that this rule set needs to die. Yes. It's not just your problem; it's some of the other little features in it that you know. They're going to get changed. I'm not saying everything about Blood Bowl 2020 is great. Don't get me wrong. But I mean, you know, like you say that, you say that. But at the end of the day, in the new rules, it just means that one player has Juggernaut, which is guaranteed. And <laughs> yeah, hopefully. That, and a player getting plus, plus nine movement and edge five is much more likely. But, it, but again, <laughs> then you need to admit, you still need to invest in it. Yeah, yeah, but it's still much more likely. And then you can throw in all four rerolls to score. <laughs> I mean, I, I agree. Yes, I mean, that, that is the huge problem with it. And yeah. I, I mean, the whisper I have heard is that it was entirely missed by the, the playtesting community that they hadn't written the rule about one reroll a turn. That and when suddenly everyone noticed and mentioned it to Games Workshop, they went, yeah, fuck you all, we're, we're just keeping that. Yeah, that, that's oh, the thing, isn't it? Because you just, you, you know, when, once you know the rules, it's like it's natural for people who know the rules to read it like they know it, isn't it? Yeah. So, like, uh, it, you know, a lot of the player testers are going to just assume it hasn't changed. And the people when who that wasn't it, changed in the errata, I, I couldn't believe it. I, I'm pretty certain we won't have that rule for you know, the next 30 years. <laughs> we may have to put up with it for the next six months or two years or whatever, but it, it, it's got to go at some point. I don't know. I think it, it could be interesting. I've, I've often wondered about, like, if you could use more than one on the same turn. I've often wondered, like, how it would change the game, and I guess we're going to find out. I don't think it's necessarily bad at all. My big yeah, worry well, about it, there, I mean... it powers up the DACA. 
Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I'm like I'm saying, why stop there? You know, this game would have been far more interesting as I predicted and called if Jim had had two blitzes that one turn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I could have done with two blitzes every fucking turn. I love how trying to yeah. hunt down the dwarves, I got two of my guys' fucking cards. Jesus Christ! Yeah, absolutely. Trying to hunt <laughs> the kill pack, going after the elves. You just, yeah, it worked the wrong why not way. Just give, why not just give every team eight blitzes and let them choose what turn they get to use them? I mean, that's kind of what it was like in uh, in you know second day. Yeah. you just every yeah, player did have blitzed, that. basically. Every player. Yeah, the only thing you could do with the blitz was move afterwards. Otherwise, you could move up and still do a block at the end of it. Yeah. It wasn't called a blitz. Everyone could. Yeah, everyone could use their movement, uh, which was like two less than their real movement, like nowadays, basically. Yep. Mm. Yeah. So you could move up to your movement and hit, and then you could sprint. Um, you had like a sprint move, which is the moves yep. that you could only make if you didn't hit. And then you could go for it on top of that. Um, but anyway, right, I should wrap up this video for YouTube because probably nobody cares about that. Um, <laughs> right. uh, so there you go. Thank you very much for the commentary, uh, Purple Chest Absolute and Skuro Metzo. Um, thank you very much for the game, KFOG. And uh, thank you for watching, everybody. It was a good run, wasn't it? Very good run with Draw the Dwarves. It was an amazing run. It was very close in the end versus the best guy with the best player. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.